Hey, everyone. Hi. Hello. It is me, Allison Rosen, and I am sitting here with Mike Catherwood, co-host of Love Line, also known as Psycho Mike, yeah. whom I've been wanting to have on the show for a really long time, but it, it finally worked out for tonight. And I, I stopped I, pretending like I was busy. Enough Thank to, you yeah. for dropping the pretense. Yeah. And you finally decided that six weeks after your baby is born, you have the time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not too tied down right now. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm, gl- I'm glad to finally meet you. And I feel like we're fast friends. I mean, I feel that way. I don't know how you feel. I definitely do. I feel like we're pretty much lovers. Right. We're fast lovers. Yeah. Without making love. But it's, right. We're, we're platonic else. lovers. Yeah. But the feelings are definitely more than platonic. Yeah. Like we're like just friends, but more than friends, but just friends. Yeah. No, we're like we're like the friends that always would have the weird sexual tension, but they, we were always in relationships. You know, there was never right. a time when we could to, just make it happen. Yeah. Two yeah. ships passing. Have you ever had one of those friendships where there's all this sexual, sexual tension and then finally have sex with a person and yeah. it's like not that good? No. It oh. was it was the opposite. Really? Uh, I was married before my current wife and um, this girl who worked with me at K Rock, um, she was my she was my phone screener for like a long time, three, four years. And she was beautiful and, and I loved talking to her and we spent a lot of time, just her and I together talking in the studio. Um and, but I was always married and I never even contemplated doing anything about it because like I said, I was married and and she was going about her life and then my wife uh left me and um it just kind of happened like we we started hanging out more and she would come over and eventually we ended up sleeping together and like we just never talked to each other for like six months after like it was really weird and awkward and then uh she got really mad at me and pretty much i haven't really spoken to her since she got really mad at you because you slept with her and then you didn't talk to her anymore no she got mad at me because she slept with me and then I didn't understand that she was – Had feelings for you. Yeah. Like she didn't understand – and, and I'm not going to say that I didn't have feelings for her either. I just have no way of expressing them. I'm terrible at that. I'm, I'm terrible with girls and – with women I should say. And um, and I just didn't know how to, to, to express that. And I thought that she was – really regretting doing that and that was her way of distancing herself and so i just interpreted that and little did i know that it was her way of saying i need you to now pursue me and make yeah, it yeah she didn't like, want to be vulnerable right and uh and we both kind of made the wrong mistake. and then she was really mad like she's like i really was head over heels for you and you didn't fall the-. i'm like oh shit so that that's how that happened so i won't do that anymore well so th- then what happened though clearly nothing but why if you had feelings for her, because like after when I tried to get in touch with her again, Wait, and, does, so does she? You guys don't work together anymore? Or you no, do? no, no, no. She she was like, where she started working there as like a straight gig because she was going to college, and I was you know it wasn't so gross because I was in my late twenties then. This is a while back, mm-hmm. um, and and she she was like a genius. She went on to go do other things. She has like a a real job and. She went. She transferred from UCLA, where she was working when she went to K Rock. She went and did her further studies at MIT. Like she was really. Oh wow! Yeah, she was one of those chicks. And I also think that that made her a bit socially awkward because she had this insane IQ, and she'd be the first to admit that. So I, I, I'm not trying to paint a bad picture. Um, and, and you you combine the two. I'm ter- I'm very socially awkward in, in in a weird way. And I know that people say, "Well, you host a talk show. How can that be?" Well, there, there, as you know, there's a tremendous difference between being behind a microphone and then actually making, you know, actual connections in real life. Yeah, behind a microphone, it's all there's. You're in such a, a neat little box, and your role is very straightforward, and all those question marks and things you have to negotiate in an actual exchange with a human being aren't. You don't have to deal with them. Right, and and as the host of a show, you get the ability. To call someone on their inability to make conversation. Yeah, you. I, I. I mean, that's my job. Is as opposed to having a great conversation with someone, it's having a great conversation for other people to listen to. Mm-hmm. And if the other end isn't delivering, and I'm confident that I am, I can call them on it. Like I can't do that in real life. I can't. My wife can't introduce me to someone at a dinner party and be like, "Dude, you're fucking boring. You got to better <laughs> pick it up." You know. So I mean, it's a strange, weird power trip to have the microphone. 
but uh, I, I'm very socially awkward, and I never felt comfortable, especially with women that I was interested in. Um, and so you take the two of us, and it was just a disaster. And then, and we've we've made up in a sense that we're now friendly. And I've expressed to her that I do care about her, and I want her to be happy. And she understood that, but she said it's better if we just don't really have anything to do with each other. So. Well, because I imagine I'm now speaking for her, and I don't really know anything about her other than she's female, but I imagine, and she's smart, um, anything short of you saying, yeah, I like you and I want to be with you was would not what she wanted to hear, right? Yeah, and by the time that we got it all out on the table, she had already moved on. Oh, okay. I, I, I hadn't. I mean, I was still like in my weird bachelor phase. And then she, and then she expressed something to me later on, which other girls have echoed that like a sentiment that other girls have repeated that really bugged me and that's <laughs> they were intimidated by my ex-wife and i said well how the, how is that possible she's not even around she left me so it's not as if there's anything any remnants to be intimidating and they're like no well she was like blonde and tall with big boobs and a size zero and it's like i never felt i could compete with that and i was mm-hmm. like what well, but she's not even here nor am i bringing her around you know what i'm saying it wasn't something that i actively imposed on them it was just this residual that my wife and my ex-wife had left behind and and, uh and that bugged me that really bugged me because i'm more than okay to kind of wallow in the stuff that i screw up on my own but to have someone else kind of like put this weird blanket over me right this this lasting cock block yeah can you understand why they felt that way though from a guy's point of view no the only thing i could compare to is if like Someone, the guy before me that a girl had dated was like a massively successful person. Like, that, like that's something. your version of right, size because zero. It, 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 yeah, if the guy was like a philanthropist and a billionaire and a scholar and hands, you know, mm-hmm. I, I could see that being like, well, what, what does she want with me? And um, is is she going to be comparing us? Right. Because right. I think that's the fear is. Okay, like when I found out that my husband at the time we were, I can't remember if we were engaged yet or not. Um, before me, he was he had a relationship that lasted seven years, you know, quite a bit before me. But I had never been in a relationship for that long. Mm-hmm. So I think I was already a little bit intimidated by that because just the idea that you can be with someone for seven years and then that doesn't work out is daunting for someone who hasn't been in a relationship for that sure. long. Uh, well, you feel like how many serious um, experiences and feelings did this – did this man that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with share with this other person? You know, right. this isn't this isn't some tawdry kind of throwaway thing. Yeah. Right. And for how long did they each think they had found the one? Right. That's weird. See, that's so patently female because guys don't give a <laughs> shit. Guys yeah. think about, man, I wonder how what guys she's been with before had a huge cock and wrecked her. <laughs> like you, you feel like feelings are out of the question. You're just like, man, I hope this guy before me didn't do anal. I hope this guy didn't have a bigger dick than me. I hope he didn't have like great abs. Right. You know, well, they, like it's all physical. Guys, they, that's all they care about, you know? Yeah. Well, so speaking of physical, um, one night we were walking out of somewhere and I saw this woman walk by and I shouldn't have done this. It's like I kind of knew what I was doing. And I said to him, that's what I, that's what I imagine she looked like. Mm-hmm. Like she looks like what I imagine your ex looks like to me. Because I think I've seen a picture once, but, like, I've never really seen a clear picture of her. And she has no online presence, which is weird. Uh, and then he's like, oh, no, um, different different body shape, which is already, like, opening it up, you know? Um, and I'm like, oh. And then he said, yeah, she was hip – hippier or something but i knew somehow because i'm better at this game than he is i'm like oh did she have a big chest it's like i knew that big hips that's code for gigantic chest yeah and then i mean long story short yes (laughs) she was she was busty super busty okay like like no you don't understand it was hard for her she was uncomfortable and she couldn't run (laughs) that kind of yeah of uh of thing that people women with big chests say um and I was very confident in our relationship, and yet just knowing – all of a sudden I just started thinking – I started thinking about it. And I started doing this math, and I started thinking, well, when he hugs me, is he feeling the difference? Is he noticing it all the time? Is he into that? Is that a, <laughs> and so anyway, I guess what I'm saying is I can imagine those women imagining being with you and thinking that you you have just so recently been with your ex 
you're they're going to be fat to you or they're going to be this right. they're going to be not enough this mm-hmm. or but that's what, it's weird in that i can see that from from the eye of the beholder you say how can i compare but guys aren't like that and i and i don't i, I hate to speak for all of men but it's if a guy's held up physically on a girl that he was with in the past which does happen i'm mm-hmm. not going to sit here and lie like you definitely keep certain girls in your spank bank and then <laughs> other girls don't compare and blah 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 but if if you're in that situation then you don't date someone you don't it doesn't last it's not serious if you're in a serious committed right. relationship with a guy and 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 you're at you have a great sex life and and he's you know things are working just know that and then he's moved on from her physically regardless of what she looked like it, like it's it's the strange thing that you have this weird kind of restrictor plate that when you're with a really attractive woman especially and it's really attractive to you i mean there's every guy has his own if you're with a girl that's in that zone but the relationship doesn't work out you definitely are like holding on to that but once you pass through that with with another relationship with a girl who it doesn't matter what she looks like you you find that relationship that connection you completely forget you like you totally forget about that kind of stuff so what happened with you and your ex-wife? She just g- got bored with me. You know, I, not to I'm, – I'm a guy who doesn't drink, doesn't do any drugs, goes – at the time was on a morning radio show that goes live at 5 a.m. What went, show is that? Kevin and Bean. Okay. The Kevin and Bean show here in L.A. Um, and, and I went to bed at 8 and watched Jeopardy and I was very – I'm very boring and I was, and I was hyper, hyper focused on – and I know it sounds so dumb because I'm, you know – at the time, especially, I wrote fart jokes for a living with, <laughs> with Ralph Garman. But but your work ethic, <laughs> right? I just I I was so driven to make something of myself professionally that I just really didn't have anything to offer in a relationship. And she got she got bored, she, and I understandably so. Um, I tried to like talk to her about stuff and life, and but she wanted to go to clubs and go to dinner and be romance and have a fun, exciting life. And she was really young at the time, you know, early mid to mid twenties during our entire marriage, and she just couldn't, she just couldn't take it anymore. She didn't, and she left. So, were you surprised? Yeah. Well, I, it was like one of those. It was like a sitcom moment because I left um, a birthday in Vegas early to come back and spend a long the re, the remainder of a long weekend with her. Um, and when I got back, the, her and her other female friends were there, and there was like a mo- like a U-Haul, and they were oh, leaving. Wow. Yeah, and she's like, "What are you doing here?" I was like, "Uh, I was coming home to surprise you." Oh, yeah, it was weak. But she so had, like, she had planned to get her shit out of there before mm-hmm. you even had a chance to like. There was no let's talk about it. No, like she had first and last month rent already paid on another apartment and the whole thing. And initially, it definitely caught me completely by surprise. And then the more, yeah, I, like she wrote me this big long letter and the whole thing. Um, the more I looked at it, of course, yeah, the writing was on the wall. I just it, it was one of those things like where you automatically assume there was no infidelity, there was no yelling. I never raised my voice. I mean, and nor did she. And, and we never had any big major arguments. And I, you know, there wasn't physical violence or any of that stuff. So there wasn't anything major to kind of catch your attention. But was I completely emotionally unavailable? Of course. And, and uh, yeah, the writing was definitely on the wall upon further inspection in, in the, the long retrospect. Yeah, I needed time to kind of grow up a little bit and look back on it and also get a life where I had like some time on my hands. You know, at the time I was doing working for e-television. What were you doing for e? Uh, there's a show. They used to have a show called The Daily Ten mm-hmm. um, before I got it canceled. Um, and then, <laughs> and then uh, I was on the Kevin and Bean show, and I was hosting Loveline. And so I was hosting Loveline from ten to midnight, live. Would try to catch a quick nap to wake up at like three thirty four to go to Kevin and Bean. Do Kevin and Bean till about eleven in the afternoon, and then go film at E from like noon to five p.m. I was just toast. And then like my my life lightened up a little bit, and I had a little time to be a normal person. I sat sat and thought about it, and I was yeah, I was I was not. An egregious prick, but I certainly wasn't a good husband. You know, I was just unavailable. 